It's a rare day this winter, one of the mildest winters here in Sweden, but it's really nice, crisp, the sun is actually rising, daylight is increasing from only some six hours of daylight in December and January. We are slowly getting up there to more daylight and finally getting some sun as well. beautiful morning I already got a delivery of um, feed for my pigs and chickens at 6:30. I already got a delivery of chicken feed and pig feed this is four bags it's about three tons of feed good morning how are you guys doing Are you dozer? You good? So the cattle walk on my deep bedding here works great. I'm feeding them hay here in this walkway. It's wide enough for me to roll out a round bale here in front of it. I'm almost out of round bales and I'm gonna feed the loose hay um, and that we just bundled up with a loose press, um, loose pressing press, I guess you would say, um, in the summertime. But this has worked really well. We sent another cow um, that had bad genetics to be processed and we, we will get the meat back tomorrow and sell parts of it to the customer, parts of it for ourselves and that way we cover the cost for the entire beef operation pretty much um, and, and are able to produce a healthy, healthy product for us without um, expenses in that sense because they're covered. So sometimes she's also laying somewhere else, chewing her food a second time. Let's go see if we can find her somewhere. Ah, down there. Hey, lucky girl. Hey, lucky girl. She's doing well. All the cows are doing well. Hi, Lizzie. Hey. Hey, girl. What a beautiful morning. Let me take you into the chicks and show you what's going on there. So here I have my breast with a few crossbreeds between breast and the German Bielefelder chicken um, in the second generation and then you get all these nice colors some black and so on so my layers are really growing well they're still getting water exclusively from these water nipples over here um, don't get as much heat anymore and I've slowly transitioned them to the feed that just came in these big bags away from the feed that um, the starter feed that I bought in the store and they're all doing really well very happy jumping around a lot moving a lot and as you can see here still have a few turkeys who are with them so just as an update on my Kunu the other heritage dual purpose breed that I imported spent a lot of money on and time on um, only two chickens survived from that breed they were so weak um, what I've noticed is that really what the chickens eat and then the transportation has such a huge impact not just on the hatch but even how they are doing afterwards and so just it didn't work out um, have to redo that but that's how it is with this kind of stuff um, it's really really hard to get a business going I recently received a comment from somebody that um, this kind of feed is part of the problem, not of the solution. Now I would really like to address that for a moment because I see the validity in that statement and um, the problem uh, with that. 
ideally you would have a system where every single feed aspect for your animals would be able to be produced on the farm. Um, I don't believe that that's absolutely needed because like Joel Salatin in my interview with him explained, um, you know, if one farm has poor land and needs to heal its land and you have another farm that um, already has better land and, and an integrated crop system that works well for them with rest periods, then I don't see a problem in, in having them help out you to import nutrients to your place and, and um, you buy the feed from them. We buy our feed from a local mill that was in the last years bought by bigger companies twice. Um, we still know exactly what is in the feed and um, what our chickens eat and also to be noted that this is just part um, of their feed. They also get whole grains, they also get um, grass and insects in the summertime, they get hay now in the wintertime, sometimes they get alfalfa pellets as well and, and other treats. So however it is um, something that of course I would like to get away from. But um, if you have read my book or if you have listened to some of my videos that I've shared, you understand the the conflict between the, the what the customers want and your reliability to be able to um, deliver a product and produce something and um, the, the compromise that both the customer makes in order to purchase your product for price and all that and the compromise you might have to make to meet somewhere in the middle between the customer. It's a very valid discussion and a big thing. And I think it's very important to consider. And so uh, while I would like to be completely feed independent uh, when it comes to chicken and pigs, um, I'm learning about that and I'm studying that from Sepulsa especially right now, but at the moment that's not really possible or an option. So. Um, for me it's okay right now, now to get that feed because it's also produced locally and I know what's in it. Um, but long term I always want to try to get away from that kind of stuff um, more and more. And that is one reason why I love the herbivore that is so demonized in our society today. The sheep, the ca cattle who you can feed with just grass that pretty much grows anywhere. I do not have to import any feed. I do not have to till any ground, tear up the ground. And, and cause erosion, um, you know, dusting away of, of feed, um, all this usage of, of, of this heavy machinery and topsoil disappearing to create a, a, a feed of grain or corn or whatever for my pigs or chicken. No, my cattle, I can just have a permaculture farm and let the, let the land rest and heal permanently. And it is completely messed up how the herbivore is being demonized like that because it is the land healing animal um, and the agriculture and the topsoil building, topsoil increasing animal um, in nature. The buffalo herds, the wildebees, um, big large herds of herbivores have created our fruitful plains with thick topsoil layers. Hey piggies and chickens, good morning. How are you guys doing today? So our two pigs, Mango, Mango the male and Peaches the female, they're doing great. And I'm quite certain that I'm talking. <laughs> I am quite certain that Peach is here, is pregnant because I, I um, Mango has been very calm, not aggressive anymore. He has had no more hormonal rushes. And um, 
I think that we can expect, because I saw them made together, I think we can expect piglets around April 18th to April 20th, somewhere there, plus minus a few days. So, um, yeah. And they love their, they love their hay and their water, nipple, and just being able to dig back there where they drop their manure, I continuously put new shavings. Especially this time of year, I really, really love the greenhouse tunnels for livestock because it's starting to get brighter, our sun is climbing up higher on the horizon and we are getting um, some good warmth in these greenhouses during the daytime. Even if we are below freezing during nighttime, um, things freeze in there, but then they warm up during the day, we open the doors, get ventilation through there. It's re it works really well. And now it's the time where you sit down and you plan to order seats and where you look at the pastures, see where you want to maybe fix a fence or add a fence or what it is you want to do. Um, even though we still have several months until growing season starts, this winter has been so mild that the spring feelings and and growing season feelings have just been there um, much earlier than normal and so today especially on such a nice day um, probably going to be doing a few things here and there and um, yeah very thankful for this beautiful day and the beautiful sunshine we've had so much gray so much rain such short days and I'm glad that's over soon <laughs> We could obviously get really strong winter still, but right now it doesn't look like it. Right now it looks like it's fairly mild. Well, thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed this quick update from the farm. I'll talk to you soon. Stay tuned. Thank you for sticking with us. And subscribe if you haven't done so. If you're new to the channel, check out our Facebook, Instagram, also our website uh, where we share some stuff. We haven't posted an article for a while. We have six, seven more homesteading related articles written that we just have to proofread and post on the website um, and then they're out there for you and if you haven't looked at the ones that are there yet check them out uh, we look forward to connecting with you guys see you bye bye